Well, here's where we jump into a topic that is um, probably most commonly taught when we talk about biological oceanography. That would be the light dark bottle method invented by two very smart Norwegian oceanographers in 1927. And this light dark bottle method um, relies on oxygen. If you recall, the light reactions are the ones that produce oxygen by splitting water apart. And so oxygen is a byproduct of photosynthesis. So if we measure how much oxygen is being produced, we have some idea of how much carbon is being fixed and how fast rates of primary productivity are in the ocean. And that was the basis for this method called the light dark bottle method. And it's still a method used today. It's used probably more in lakes and in uh, limited circumstances in bays and in really productive waters in the ocean. Although uh, some oceanographers now also use the light dark bottle method or variation of that um, in some of the really dilute waters. Um, but it's still a method popular today for measuring primary productivity. Now, before we talk about the light dark bottle method and how oxygen is used to estimate primary productivity, we have to talk about how oxygen is also consumed. Plants make oxygen, but what few people realize is that plants also use oxygen. Of course they do. Everything that's living respires. It has some metabolic pathways by which it has to use uh, energy, or and in the doing of that, um, in aerobic organisms, they use oxygen as part of that process. So aerobic respiration is consumption of oxygen that helps you metabolize sugars and all those other things that you have to break down to provide energy for your cells. So plants and organisms like us and organisms like bacteria, which are nature's little recyclers, and probably the dominant organism in terms of sucking up and consuming oxygen in the ocean, but all the zooplankton, the fishes, the squids, the whales, the dolphins, all those kinds of things are breathing in oxygen and using it. The plants are putting out oxygen and using a little bit for their own purposes. Everything else is consuming oxygen. So to get an understanding of how fast the plants are producing oxygen, we also have to take into account things that take oxygen away. And we do it like this. If you think about processes, cellular processes that use oxygen, we can write this simple equation. Sugars, remember this is the equation for sugars in the presence of water and oxygen produce, and in terms of metabolic processes, produce carbon dioxide and water. This is the equation for respiration. Think about this or take a look at this. If we turn the arrow around, we have the process of photosynthesis. The main point here, without belaboring, is that photosynthesis produces oxygen, respiration takes oxygen away, and the balance between those two will tell us something about how productive the waters are. So if we can estimate how much oxygen is being removed, that will allow us to say how much oxygen is being produced. And that was the basis of the light dark bottle method. Okay, the rate at which phytoplankton produce oxygen is called gross primary productivity, often symbolizes GPP. It's a measure of the amount of t oxygen produced by the phytoplankton prior to their using it. Remember, phytoplankton plants also have to use a little bit of oxygen to make their cells grow. Okay, so they produce oxygen, they use a little bit. The amount that they produce before anybody uses it is called gross primary productivity or gross primary production. The amount left over after the phytoplankton have used it is called net primary productivity. Now, if you think about it, you've heard of these terms gross and net before, if you've had a job. So if you work for a legitimate enterprise in which you receive a paycheck every week, if you look at the little square that has the number in it that you're the most concerned about, how much money am I putting in the bank, that's called your net wages. That's the amount of money left over once taxes are subtracted from your gross wages. So 
gross primary productivity, if we take away the taxes, which is respiration, leaves us with net primary productivity. And we can symbolize that with this equation. What's left over, the amount of oxygen left over or the amount of carbon left over, is equal to that which is produced minus that which is consumed, or NPP, net primary productivity, equal gross primary productivity minus respiration. This equation, simple equation, and with which you have some experience if you've ever earned money, is a basis for the light-dark bottle method.